All right, today uh, we're going to do just some example problems of taking an object from its model space to its world space um, by just simply coming up with a model to world matrix that represents uh, that transformation. So let's run into it now. So I've got the matrices there for reference. Um, these are the ones from the previous video. So if you don't know what these are, make sure you go back. Um, <clears throat> so look at what problems we're going to do real quick. We're going to do three problems here and it just says find the model to world matrix for the described object. Now in the previous video you saw that I took like a single point and we underwent some transformations to it, right? We we scaled it, rotated it, and translated it <clears throat> to put it somewhere else in the world. Well as you notice here I'm not going to actually take a point and multiply it by anything. We're only just going to come up with the model to world matrix for a whole object because <clears throat> if an object is just a list of points right uh, like a square would be four different points or vertexes then when we rotate that object or scale that object then we perform that same operation on all four of those vertices right so basically if you have the one model to world matrix for the object then all of the points you just basically go through the list and you multiply each point individually by that matrix and you end up getting the resulting rotated object because all of its points have rotated or all of its points have scaled and so on and so forth. So we're not going to do anything with the points anymore. We're going to think of an object as an object and just come up with a single matrix that represents its transformation from model space to world space. Okay, so uh, take a minute, uh, pause this if you need to, and write down these problems and give them a shot real quick. Um, see what you get, and then I'll go through them all and, and see if they match up with mine. All right, so before we uh, get started, I think that I skipped over the idea of why we actually take some point, right? And we scale it, then rotate it, then translate it. I mentioned that order of operations is important because if you're in like column major, for example, you need to multiply them in this order. And if you're in row major, right, you need to multiply them in this order. But I didn't say exactly why, and I'll, I'll just do this really quickly with one simple example. Let's say uh, we have our axis, and let's say we have some square that's in this squarish. Good enough. Okay, <clears throat> if we scale this first, then it would obviously scale from its center because it's at the center of its world. If we rotate it as well, we're rotating it about the center. But the moment we translate it, we're translating it away from the origin, right? So if we had, I mean, if we scale it and then we rotate it, right, then we could get something that's like twice as big or just say this much bigger. So this could happen. And that's, that's normal. It's a uniform scale, right? It's scaling about its center. Uh, then you could rotate it and it would rotate about its center as well and you'd end up having you know an, sorry you'd end up having you know an object that was then rotated okay so that all is fine and dandy but all right let's say you scaled it or translated it first this will show why this is would be a problem All right, so take that same object that was at the middle, and let's say we moved it right a couple units or something. Okay, so then you'd end up having this guy, okay? Now, if you rotate it at this point or scale it, well, let's just look at rotation. You're rotating, you're always rotating about the origin, right? That's how the rotation would work, which would actually mean that you'd be taking this this vector right here in a way right and you'd be you'd be rotating that okay so you'd end up with like a new one out here right and you end up getting this like like orbiting effect okay this is what this is what would happen as a result of a rotation if you had rotated it after you had already translated it which is not what you wanted you if you wanted to to rotate you know, by like 45 degrees, you would have hoped that your object would be exactly, you know, 
45 degrees rotated, right? Which, you know, it's not. It's not quite there because it's been orbiting. Which also means if you really understand these order of operations and what they do, you can do things like this. Like what if you want an object to orbit an around another object? Well, then you would just translate it so that that object you're orbiting around is at the center, at the origin, and then rotate, perform a rotation about it, and then translate it back. And that would give you, you know, essentially objects that can orbit around other ones. But that's not what we're trying to do here. We don't want to orbit around our own axis. We definitely want to actually perform a normal rotation. All right, so that's why we do the things in that order. Okay, we'll jump into the problems. Go with problem one. So if I go a little quickly, bear with me. Um, go back to the earlier video as I explain how I do my like matrix multiplication a little faster. Um, then, or maybe that's how you were taught, so that would be nice. All right, so we just need to make. I'm going to do this in column major, so we're going to say that our our points are going to be in the form x, y, one like so, which means our points will be on the right, right? which means we scale and then rotate and then translate and we do the, them in this order. Okay, So I'm going to start with the scale matrix here. We're scaling by 2 on the x and 1 half on the y, so we're just going to fill in the scale matrix right there. So 2, 1 half, 1, the rest are zeros. Okay, there's our scale. All right, and then our rotation. Rotating by 90 degrees, that's simple. So cosine of 90 degrees is 0. Cosine of 90 degrees is 1, so minus 1 because it's minus sign. And then 1 and 0. All right, our translation is by 1 on the x, negative 2 on the y. And there we go. So let's go ahead and do our multiplication. So this is 2 times this vector. So the result of this is 0, 2, 0. 1 half times the second vector. So negative 1 half, um, 0, 0. And 1 times the third vector. OK. Uh, so then now that we have this result, we're going to multiply this by that. And we'll get our final results. So this is 2 times the second vector, so we get the same vector back. Negative 1 half times the first vector, we get the same vector back. And 1 times the third vector, which is 1 minus 2, 1. So our model to world for this is that guy. Alright, so that's problem number 1. Let's move on to number 2. Okay, problem two. Same thing, so we're doing three on the x and three on the y. So our scale matrix, we just fill in those values. Okay, and we're gonna rotate. So this one is a good chance, this gives me a good chance to show you this little fun little table I suppose. If you're not great at memorizing the unit circle you can memorize this table and it'll give you kind of all the important angles and what the results are of taking the cosine and the sine of them. What you do is you count uh, so you count down from 4, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Count up from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Square root this whole like table and put the whole table over 2. Okay, Then the top will represent your cosine, the bottom will represent your sine, and then we're going to just put the angles at the top of this table, like the most popular angles, which is 0, 30 degrees, 45, 60, and 90. Okay. So if you, if you memorize this table, then I'll show you how to use it. You simply say, okay, I want, let's say, the cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, so the cosine of 45 degrees 
is equal to, so we look up cosines rho, and we look up 45 degrees column, and we get 2, but I square root this whole thing to show that you're always going to take the square root of whichever number is there. So it's square root of 2 over 2. That's the answer. Now to prove that it's right, uh, we can use a simpler one like the cosine of 0. We know, right, that the cosine of 0 is 1, but let's do it the cosine of 0 is 1, but let's do it like this. Um, cosine of 0, I get 4 here, so square root of 4 over 2, which is equal to 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. So it works with even the simpler ones. Okay, so that's how you can use that table. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and use it. Okay, so we want to rotate by minus 30 degrees. So all we're saying is we're just going to rotate um, clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Um, if you rotate it by a negative angle, the cosine of that angle is actually uh, positive anyway. It's the same as rotating about the positive angle. Um, and then the sine is the same as minus sine of the angle. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we have right here cosine of 30, right, is square root 3 over 2. Right, cosine of 30, square root 3 over 2. Cosine of minus 30 is the same as the cosine of 30. So we're going to just put square root 3 over 2. Okay, then uh, minus sine of minus 30. Okay, so sine of 30, first of all, is square root 1 over 2, which is 1 half, right? Sine of minus 30 is minus 1 half, and minus minus 1 half is positive 1 half. And zero. And then we get minus one half here. We get root three over two again here. And we get that. Okay, and translate. Translating by what? Minus two and minus two. Okay. Okay, let's perform a multiplication. Let's do scale times rotate. This is 3 times the first vector, so 3 square root 3 over 2. Uh, this is minus 3 halves and 0. That's a 2. Uh, 3 times the second vector, so we get 3 halves, 3 square root 3 over 2 and 0. And 1 times the last vector, which is just 0, 0, 1. Okay. We multiply this by this, and we're going to get one. Uh, sorry, three times the square root of three over two times the first vector plus minus three halves times the second vector, which we end up getting the same vector back. So three square root three over two minus three halves zero, and then this is three halves times the first plus three square root three over two times the second, which gives me the same thing back again okay and then one times the last vector so minus two minus two and one okay and this is model to world there we go all right let's do the last one Okay, problem three, and here we go. Scale by one half, one half, one. So there's our scale matrix. Let's get our rotation matrix. So we've got the uh, cosine of 45 degrees, which is square root two over two. We have minus the sine of 45 degrees, which is also square root 2 over 2, 0. And we get square root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, and our translation, which is by what? 1 half minus 1 half 1. Alright, let's check it. 
Scale by one half on the x, one half on the y, rotate by 45 degrees, translate by one half and minus one half. Cool. So let's multiply this, these two. This is one half times this vector. So we get root two over four, then we get root two over four and zero. And then this is one half times the second vector, so minus square root two over four, root two over four, and zero. Zero, zero, one. Okay, take this guy, multiply him by the translation, and we get this times the first vector plus this times the second vector, which gives us the same vector back. This times the first vector plus this times the second vector, again, same vector back. And then one times the third vector, one half, minus one half, and one. So there is our model to world matrix. So this, what the model to world represents is really simple. You can see this is a single matrix now. We've done the calculations one time, and then we can store this in the object, say, you know, every frame after it's moved or whatever. And then we just take all the points of the object, you know, P0, right, or I suppose we could say, like, PI, right, to PN, right, as many points as there are, we can multiply them by this, and we'll get our P prime, I to N. Okay, so we get all of our primes, all of our transformed points, and that represents our object after it's gone through these transformations. All right, uh, should be just about do it. If you find any errors in the video, just feel free to let me know so I can correct them in the annotations and things like that. Um, so I think I went through this fairly quickly. If you have any questions as well, just feel free to send me a message, and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, see you next time.